my passion right now is I feel like what happens to women over 40 is, is we're suffering and the only answer that we're being given is take hormones. And yet, if you look at the trajectory of a woman's body and brain, we're supposed to lose hormones mm -hmm. because we don't have eggs to be released anymore. Mm -hmm. So what's the consequence to the brain when we lose hormones? And the solution, the consequence is huge, but the solution be throw more hormones at it because in some sense that's going against our natural cycle. And what I think is happening is that more and more women are struggling because of other subtleties like we're talking about right here. Mm -hmm. So if you're listening to this and you're like, wow, I can see the negative feedback loop. Mm -hmm. I'm not getting enough sleep. I can't get myself out of my stress loop. And this is the seat of the brain that needs to be pulsed in and out. Mm -hmm. How do we go about doing that? And where does so methylene... how do you Oh, now we're getting into some good stuff, right? So <laughs> how do we take care of the blue spot? Yeah. So hopefully up until now, anybody listening to this or watching this is going to be like really excited about the potential to really care for this part of the brain. Yeah. Know this has become something that I've been obsessed with. I love this. And so I call it blue spot therapy. Tell us. I BST, love this. BST. Okay? I love this. I hope this is <laughs> so your, you're is hearing this your it next first. book. Yeah, it is. Okay, go for it. Yeah. Tell me. So I have a I have a schematic that I did that is basically showing all of the different things that will have a positive or a negative impact, right? So obviously any type of oral or dental hygiene issues, mm. right? So cavitations, mm. taking care of your doorways is mm. kind of the broad okay. idea here. So when I say doorways, I think nasal passage, oral, and also your colon, right? Oh yeah. So these are the primary areas that endotoxins get into our system, Okay. right? And so endotoxins are going to activate these inflammatory responses, mm -hmm. which then you have the cell danger response. So yeah. there's the other huge aspect of negative impact on the locus ceruleus is mitochondrial function. Okay. Because there is a huge need for lots of mitochondrial power in the locus ceruleus. Mm. So when we start having low mitochondrial output, then we start having some problems there with, with high oxidation. Mm. And in the beginning of the talk, you know, we were kind of alluding to this idea of like what's happening with aging, right? Mm -hmm. What's connected to that and that you had mentioned senescent cells. Mm -hmm. And so it really comes down to this basic idea that we become less efficient at converting oxygen and glucose into mm. fuel, into mm -hmm. ATP through the mitochondria. Right. And then this this idea of these zombie cells and these senescent cells that can be cleared up and you're the expert on fasting which is mm -hmm. the best way to clear those up. I was just up. gonna say uh, my brain's like how does fasting affect the blue spot but go keep going. Yeah well it's gonna help it because lowering inflammation is gonna really mm. support it so they've shown that higher inflammatory because you think about inflammation in general it, it's a stress trigger mm. right mm -hmm. so anything to do with sleep is gonna be a great conversation for the locus ceruleus and the blue spot right. Because it you, needs sleep. You need that REM. So yeah. you look at like, you know, I mean, could deep dive into sleep for a while, but the yeah. basics are, you know, light pollution at night, mm -hmm. um, avoiding stressful types mm -hmm. of things, you know, at night, not eating too late, a cold, dark room. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, just getting the basics down with the sleep and then honoring the circadian rhythm, mm. you know, so like doing some sun, we talked about sun yeah. gazing, right. And yeah. one of the most powerful things you could do is watch some, you know, the sunrise. Mm, yeah. I love that idea. You know, and then secondly, if you can watch the sunset and so this is pacing the brain so that the brain can appreciate the sleep wake cycles. Some of the work that I do with the endonasal is really powerful because you're talking about pacing these oscillations, which become problematic. So not just that, but also the negative impact that a collapsed nasal passage might have with the biome that's in the nasal mm. passage and the possibility mm. of, you know, infections outgassing these endotoxins mm. that then enter the body and get into the brain because it's so closely related, especially with the face. You know, I was talking to, I interviewed, do you know Heidi Havoc? Do you remember her? She's a brain researcher no. and she's been looking at what the chiropractic adjustment does to the brain. And one of the things I learned in my conversation with her her is that the brain is always reading the stress from the body and um, when the body gives it a stress single signal back, it actually starts to create a stronger signal back to the body. And so again, negative feedback loop yeah. of something. And so it'll tighten muscles. It'll contract, you know, our masseter starts to tighten, mm -hmm. our temporalis starts to tighten. And we tend to think of stress as so exogenous. Mm -hmm. We think of it as it has to be something out in our environment. Mm -hmm. But what the brain is doing, and I just heard that in what you were saying, is that it's reading what's going on inside the body and the body will tell it if 
it should be in fight or flight or not. Mm. So if your cranium is jammed up and you're not getting that flexibility, that's another level of stress. It's mm. also sounds like it's another level of not being able to clear out endotoxins. Mm -hmm. So you're building up endotoxins in the body, which again is creating this feedback mm. that is so detrimental to humans, but especially women, because when cortisol goes up, progesterone goes down. Now we got a problem with the locus ceruleus. Right. And that's a good point. So hormones are another really important aspect of taking care of your locus ceruleus, you know, and, and, you know, those are some really good points that you have. It's like nature has just created such a perfect symphony, right? And there's all these checks and balances. <laughs> yes. And the more we can understand this, yes. the more we can start to kind of intervene and like support and kind of grease some of these things so that they move a little bit with less friction. I think at the root of all biohacking and probably even in here is what you're doing is you're restoring a very primitive healing power within the body that is being taken away by the modern world. So the reason we've got so many biohacks now, so many IVs, so many interesting therapies is because the modern world is taking well, we weren't so meant right. We weren't meant to be swimming in all these stressors. Right. 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 Yeah. So now we have to look at things like high dose melatonin, which I talk a lot about, me yeah. uh, methylene blue, taking care of your doorways, right? I mean, this is a big part of what we do with a lot of, you know, our, our patients, you know, right. at the clinic is we get them doing, you know, this 30 day sinus protocol that I love to do with glutostat, right? Mm. And we use essential oils. We have a, a blend called Boca Zen where, mm. you know, it, it's something that is used in the mouth and, and it, it helps to support the gums. You know. So you, what I'm hearing in that is you feel like so much that's going on in our sinus area and in our mouth is affecting our brain, specifically the locus ceruleus. Oh, big time. Yeah. yeah. And when you look at the research and you see how these, because the proteins, the neurofibrillary tangles in the tau and the beta amyloid, that's all basically immune mm. response, right? So it's endotoxins right. that are activating this immune response in the brain and the brain takes these proteins, wraps it around these toxins mm. to protect it from continuing to activate the glial system right which basically is like this like really negative inflammatory system in the brain yeah. so it's like a protective mechanism right and so we need to look at different routes that these endotoxins get into our body mm. and slow those down or minimize those. Okay, so now let's go back. There was one thing that you said that I really want to cycle back to because the other part of this conversation that I want people to grab is how intricate the stress cycle is. And what you're bringing to my attention, I never heard of the locus ceruleus until this morning, is that I've been so focused on the amygdala and the mm. over hypervigilant amygdala causing the constant cortisol rise because it's constantly looking for fear signals. Mm -hmm. But what I'm seeing with the locus ceruleus is that it also impacts that stress response. You gave us some lifestyle tools that we can use, but talk to me a little bit about like methylene blue. Well, I did an IV of that this morning. I will tell you my reaction of doing it. And then you gave us some breath work and then you gave me some magnesium. Within an hour of those two, I just could feel euphoria. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does that have to do with changes that are going on in the brain? Well, it's calming your nervous system down, mm. right? And it's improving vascularity, mm. right? So the magnesium, most, most of us are deficient in magnesium. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it actually takes a bit of energy to bring magnesium in. And that's why a lot of people, even though they take a lot of it, they, mm. they're still deficient. One hack is they can take nicotinamide along with magnesium. Mm. You got to kind of take it at the same time, but yeah. you'll, you'll actually find some really neat benefits. I think at some point, you know, I might consider making a, a supplement that combines those two together because it's magic. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's your, your wizardry. It so, needs to but be happening. that IV we call Luma Blue. Okay. And so it starts with a high dose of magnesium, 2000 milligrams. And then we did an IV of, of silver. And so mm -hmm. silver is complementary to methylene blue because it mm -hmm. enhances its photodynamic mm -hmm. capacities. Yeah. So the methylene blue has an affinity to mitochondria. Okay. 